Um, so Darrell, welcome to the show. Yo, I'm happy to be um, so, here, so man. I brought you on today to speak about you know recent events. Basically, we're gonna cover all kind of recent events, uh, sports, politics, economics, uh, whatever is going on in the world. Uh, we can talk about it. Right? I'm here for it, bro. I bet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, do you want to? I, I, my usually when I have guests on, the first thing I like to ask is like, um, just a little bit about them and just to get a little background about who they are okay. and what they do. So, if you, if you don't, if whatever you want to share with us, you can or whatever. All right. Well, you know, my name is Darrell. I'm originally from Jersey, but I'm from Allentown. I've been out here since I was 12, 29 now. I'm saying I'm black and I'm Spanish, mixed guy. <laughs> you know, I eat food. <laughs> like, you feel me? I just be chilling, bro. Yeah, I, you, I mean, you, you grew up with your mom and, and uh, you know, my you grew up with your mom, yeah. your stepdad. Shout out to Mama Dudes. Word. My stepdad, Guido, great man. He's a real good role model right there. Word. You know what I'm saying? Hardworking Dominican man, right off the boat. And this nigga, let me tell you about, real quick, everybody, a little quick backstory <laughs> about my stepdad, Guido. My stepdad had to make a decision in his life, like hop on his boat because he didn't have time to tell his family nothing. Like his man, they was like by the water. His man's like, yo, they going. You coming or not? And it's not no boat like a tight Where, tent. where exactly? Um, where was he from? From South America? Which he was country? Dominican Republic. Just, uh, yeah. I forgot what the little city he's from. I don't know. Oh, yeah, it don't matter. But... Yeah, but anyways, so he just hopped on the boat and. Came to Puerto Rico, and then from Puerto Rico, he went to, to the States. And I'm basically shouting out my stepdad because he's just a, a, a great man and a good role model. Word. Somebody uh, I look up to. Word. Definitely. Nigga man. don't miss work. Being in the hot <laughs> world. I mean, yeah, for real, that's, that's a big uh, compliment and something to look up to, you know? And I, I remember him from visiting you. Uh, you hey. know, it made, at least you, uh, you know, you always had a, a man in the house, you know? It was, it was a, it was a good, a good one, too, because some niggas... That's a, that's a positive. Think, not everybody gets to even have a role model in a house like That's that. That's a fact. That's and a if fact. they do, sometimes they're not a, a good one to look up to. Word. My role models were my uncles, you know. And, I think uh, they're good because those yeah. are good role models, hardworking men. Word. Man. Word. <laughs> yeah. Word. That's, that's what's up. It's, it's funny, you, you know. Um, you know, like most of us, not, not everybody gets to grow up with their father. But, um, you know, with having a positive role model in the house. I mean, like I can speak from experience, you know. It it can it, go a long it can, way. It can be a benefit for sure. It could go a long way. Yeah, it doesn't way. always have to be your father, but if it's if it's an uncle that steps up in the family, or even family, though, even friend. if a stepdad that yeah. that comes in and um, you know, and 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 joins your family, it it it, it can it, do a lot of good. It things can be man. way better than than not having zero nobody there because you run around there, doing what you want, and especially and, at a young age too. Because when you young, bro, like. You're not gonna think like having you was like like right now. I'm 29. I'm not gonna think about my mindset is way different from when I was 21, Word. 22, 23. That's why I was having 100 jobs because I didn't have that work ethic like I do now. Like I I, I know I understand the value of having a job. Like don't let nobody ever like play y'all. You got a job, hold on to that, bro. Because there's a lot of niggas out there hungry and starving and shit like that, bro. And don't let nobody ever play you by having a job, nigga. Social media is a fake world. <laughs> all right it's a fake world bro i that was completely i bro. was completely lost coming out of high school bro i think a lot of us i were. was i didn't I have was, a lot of us were. i was actually going to school i boot right here we was in the same class and i had challenges going on in my life that i didn't get to complete it but at the end of the day those challenges is like you got to get through it because like high school or community college at, well, community college when, when we was in that electrical school together yeah, yeah class yeah. whatever at a tri-c it's like I had to like catch the buzz, go to work, do this extra shit. I didn't have a car at that time, but that's just an excuse. I was supposed to make a way. So like, if I was going through that back it's then, it's tough though, bro. It doesn't matter. It doesn't it's matter. an excuse. Let me tell you something. Like with my mindset right now that I have as this twenty-nine-year-old man, if I had to go through the exact same things I was going you through, stuck it out. I would have did it. I would have finished school. Let's talk about it, Abu. What's what's the next topic, man? So we just ran through. Uh... Draymond, the whole situation. Low, low rant. So, I mean, we, we can we can probably just end it with this. Um, they are a lot of a lot of people and all of other NBA players are uh, suggesting therapy for for Draymond. What do you think about that? Do you think it's a good idea? What do you think about therapy? All in total? See, like the thing is though, like I don't know how effective is therapy actually for people, because I don't know. 
a lot of people that actually go to therapy and I don't know like they're whatever they went to therapy like being resolved. So like I really don't know how effective therapy is. Cause me, I'm a firm believer. I feel like you could just do it yourself. Like I feel like niggas is not gonna make Draymond change just because he's going to talk to niggas. I feel like the only way Draymond is gonna change is if you take money away from him. You know what I'm saying? Or take take the league away from him. They've been doing. Uh, they've been fighting him though, right? They've been fighting him, but like he got like they got to, like if you want Draymond to learn a lesson, you got to spend a nigga for a year or some shit like that. You know what I mean? You got like like for people, especially like for privileged niggas like that. He's a privileged nigga. I'm not even saying he didn't work hard to get there, but you in a privileged situation where you could, you know, take care of your family forever type shit. So like, you know, when you have something, like you get used to having it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like, right. since he already got all the money, he's not scared to lose it because he, he's up there. You got to just take shit away from him. I don't think therapy going to work. Word. I think taking his money away going to work. Like if you do sponsors, suspend them and shit. Yeah, that would be the real therapy. Not no five game. Yeah, not no five game <laughs> shit. Take take the year away from the nigga so he, he can ban him for a year. Come back and he understand like nigga, you you don't we that we, would probably hurt. Yeah, man. You we got, allow you to be here, yeah. nigga. This not your league, nigga. You can't do what you want. You out of here. <laughs> Next, nigga. Yeah, I think that would definitely work. You know, because that's something he loves. Um, if he take away something he loves, and it pays well, he's gonna really think about it. He's exactly. gonna sit there and be like, damn, yo. Yeah, I I think what I was doing was probably wrong. I'm wilding. Like, let me just chill out. Let me file people regular regular files. <laughs> not, he gonna not hate makers. He gonna go to the therapist, lay in that little couch or whatever it is, and just be like, bro, I'm just here because they asked me to be here. I am who I am, and he even says it. I'm I am who I am. I am who I am. He's unapologetic for that. He's him. He's him. <laughs> He's Draymond, and y'all niggas. Man, man. Shout out to uh, Draymond, though. I, I wish him the best, and I, I, and I hope he can uh, move uh, forward and get forward his shit together. His together for because he's 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 a great player. He's been there with all the chips, I think, right? for all most four. of it. Okay, all, all four, four. Yeah. yeah, he's been he's there for the there. chips. And uh, you know, he's he's a legend. He's gonna be a legend, bro. You know, yeah, and, he is. It's, he's just gotta build, you know, a little bit like a like a little uh, like in, in in the eyes of the public. He just got a, a better the, image. Yeah, a little better. Image. His, Im- I feel like his for image his, is for tarnished. His, legacy, man. his shit is fucked. He can't get it back. I, uh, I don't know. Did you see the highlight maybe tape of Draymond whooping everybody's ass? <laughs> 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 Come on. Maybe, maybe if you give him a how, like, do you think he's gonna retire soon? What do you think about that? Like, I think within like the next three to four years. I think that's enough for him to like, uh, like be- rebuild his image. I think that's enough time to rebuild his image. I don't know. He comes out. I think. I, I think so. Maybe. Maybe like you said. Maybe he needs like a year off. Comes back. You know, like hustle for the next three years, and probably like just rebuild his image. Like that's that's the, that should be the only reason he's he should be back playing basketball. He's just to rebuild his image so he can go down as one of the greats. You know, and somebody that somebody as uh, and also as a person that we can look up to. You know what I'm saying? Like, for the youngins, man. He got yeah, for the young numbers, guys. Man. I just feel like negative, especially in the world that we live in, negative always outshines, outshines the good. The good. That's a so, I, yeah, hopefully. That's why, that's why you see all these internet dudes, right? Social media dudes. A lot of their stuff is negative. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's it. the stuff that gets a lot of clicks. The clicks. It's you know, people stuff. talking about somebody's moms uh, or like, or like uh, what's his name? Um, uh What's his name? White. Uh, what's his name? Charleston White. Charleston oh, yeah. White. He out there wilding. Yeah. Uh, you know, like really negative. He. I mean, he. Don't get no. me wrong. He. He do have some positive stuff. Saying, but did you but, see the video where he was basically saying when he was um being like a, the positive guy, the positive black man? Y'all niggas ain't want to listen to him. You talking about the one when he was on um what's his Cam Newton's uh, show? I, I I think that's where it's from. When he okay. basically saying y'all niggas ain't want to listen to him. When he was like with the bow tie and trying to change laws and shit like that, niggas ain't want to listen to him. But as soon as he turned the nigga up in him, then everybody Charleston White. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so well, like like what do you how, like what do you think that is? Though? Is there is something wrong with us like as a society like in the stuff we we consume? Like yeah, like we so we we screwed up, man. Like we screwed up as a society. It's it's, it's like a. And especially too now in this generation with the, with the fucking internet, bro, it's all fucked up. It's all fucked up, bro. And I'm not even gonna say I'm gonna even just talk about our people, bro. Like we like we glorify negative stuff. We glorify being from the hood. We glorify killings. Why are we listening to rap songs and stuff like that? I ain't gonna act like I don't listen to it. I do. But why? Why are we listen to songs about people selling drugs? 
and killing each other and shit like that. Why we think that's cool? Why when we go to like another neighborhood, we say, oh, we, I'm from over here. Your shit ain't hood as my shit. Like, why we do that? Right. Who gives a fuck if we, we live we in We brag about being more, more like bad or like- Exactly. Like, shit oh, is we, why. Oh, yeah. And that shit is just bringing us down, bro. Because at the end of the day, what you think is cool? Being out here, going to work, going home, chilling with your family, or going to jail, being locked up with a bunch of niggas, the white nigga tell you to go in a cell, you act crazy, he gonna put you in a hole, you can't do what you want, you gotta shower when these niggas tell you to shower. What you think is more cool, bro? That's why I don't get into that. The first that. one, bro. I'd rather be home with my, my family, family, getting up, going to work, you know what I mean? When niggas, when niggas be like, try to like downplay, like, like they say niggas like, Go to work, niggas, is a square. I'll be a square all day, my nigga. Because when at the end of the day, you're going to be in two different types of squares. You know what I'm saying? That's you're going to be in four. That's the line, bro. You That's know what I mean? Line right there. Yeah, you're going to be, be two types of squares. You're going to be under in the square or you're going to be locked in the square with another nigga. So pick being a gangster if you want to. Word. That, even I was going to say, like, the whole... Me and Eric was talking about it when he was on here about, like, the whole gangster music and... Like it's but like we like we think it's it's like dying. Like people are getting tired of it. You yeah, know, I I feel like people are getting tired of it. You get like Char- a guy like Charleston White. You know he's he hate rappers. He be like I hate yeah, yeah niggas be dying. <laughs> niggas talking about <laughs> killing niggas. He, Man, he fuck hate, that. He nigga. hate rappers. You know and mm-hmm. uh, and I mean <clears throat> rapping is I mean that that whole gangster rap and that whole like uh, glorifying murder, especially um, you know killing black people specifically. It's like. It's playing out, bro. I think a lot of people getting tired of it. And I'm not even going to lie. Like, bro, this is all a scheme. Everything, bro. Everything. But we don't we don't look at it like that, bro. Think about it. Like, the whole prison system is a business, right? Facts. It's a whole business. Like, them niggas make money by you being locked up. Then we got music glorifying fucking killing and selling drugs. What gets you locked up for a long time? Killing and selling drugs. Then now we killing each other and we getting locked up and then niggas is making money on top of us, like being locked up. Niggas making money for us for dying. Cause what you think when you die, you don't think niggas gotta come up with no money? Nah. You gotta pay for a casket, you gotta pay for the funeral home, you gotta pay for your flowers, you gotta pay for all of that. So yeah. all this is a business. And then when they put the music in it, like I know a lot of motherfuckers that like um like they be looking up to the rappers and trying to be like them, like, like yeah, like the youth, role model. Like yeah. The youth. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, and y'all just getting caught Mick up. Mick Mills in used shit. to used to be a role model for me when yeah, I was me younger. Too. I used to look up to Mick Mills, you know, all that crazy shit he was saying, you know, about and, his and life. I ain't never do none of that shit Meek Mill was talking about. I never been to jail, and I Word. plan on never going. <laughs> That's so a fuck. fact. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be locked up. You know, you know who's a big um. No, that was a great that was a great point you made. Um I don't wanna I didn't wanna just uh divert from there. But Okay. But speaking about role models though, you know who's a big role model right now, I think for the youth? Who? Um NBA Young Boy. Yes. Yo, you'd be surprised how much how kids much, listen yo, to NBA Young Boy, bro. A lot, bro. And you think he's a good role model for these kids? He's he's trying to change, but not in the uh, not a couple years ago. Let's say that, like, okay. not before he went to jail or he was in jail, um, but I think I seen recent stuff from him where he's actually holding himself accountable. Where he's but saying stuff he, he's not gonna rap about gangster shit. No that's more. what at least that's what he said. He said he's gonna try to be more positive. As long as um, he's trying. Yeah, word. You know, I, but I think you know discussions like this, um, people, you know, bringing uh, just just having these kind of discussion and bringing it to light, trying to make it make sense. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think some of these rappers, like they're not dumb, bro. Like a lot of these rappers, they're listening and and they're they're connecting the dots. And and I hope most of them, you know, like take control of their message and try to make it more positive for the youth. Right. Because the people who really listen to this is the youth, bro. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, Charleston, I I, I like but uh is some of the like things, his message. Some of the things he be saying. Some things I don't agree with at all. Yeah, facts. You know, you know what's crazy though. He's been saying the same thing over the and whole over. time. He's being consistent. Yeah, like, well, no, I'm saying like for an example, all these different shows that invite him that he goes on, mm-hmm. that he makes money from. I mean, congrats to him. 
But bro, he's literally saying the same thing on all these shows. Okay. Like when I watched the the uh, um, Cam Newton episode with Charleston White, um, he I already have heard all those same things from him uh, on a words, different show. Like, so he's getting on, paid on the, to repeat the yeah, same story. Yeah, he's getting paid to to repeat the same the same lines. But I mean, I guess that's his thing, and he's basically just trying to get the message out of what he thinks about. Like the whole rap culture, the whole and like the, our current state uh, as a community that, that, that we in as a people, you know what I'm saying? And it's not a good one, bro. It's not a good one. I ain't even gonna lie, it's not a good one. Well, we can do better, man, for sure. A lot better. NBA Young Boy. Um, the other reason I brought him up too, you know, what's interesting. Tell me. A lot of a lot of the the, the young boys at the at the mosque at the masjid. They listen to him. Yo, NBA Young Boys is their guy at bro. the mosque. At the mosque. What do you think about that? I think that's kind of crazy to me. I ain't gonna lie because, you know, I don't really do the religion thing. I don't. I don't really like talk about religion because religion is like a touchy, touchy thing to talk about. But I think yeah. that um, like the Muslim young Muslim brothers listen to NBA Young Boy. In my opinion, I think it's kind of crazy. That's not something you would expect, right? Nah, nah. How how you how you ride into the mosque with NBA Young Boy on? But the thing is, though, not for nothing. Like, bro, we all humans, bro. That's a fact. We're not That's perfect, so we're not perfect at all. Nobody is. Yeah, but um, yeah, man. Like when I like like you could like I heard it from like some of their 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 earpiece John, mm -hmm. or like they'll they'll quote him. You know what I'm saying? When in the mosque. That I like right there in the parking lot before all like just hanging out. So that's where you be they hearing the music and stuff like that. They don't play the music, but I know who I know what that who that line is from. You know what I'm saying? Okay. They'll be spitting some NBA young boy line. Yeah. You know they'll be they'll be just jocking his style. You know his swag. You what know? you think like, about that? Because you a Muslim brother yourself, so what you think about that? I was I was if, shocked myself, man. I but how shocked. do you feel about it though? Um, how do I feel about it? Yeah, I mean, like, but like you said, bro. Like honestly. Uh, nobody's perfect. You know what I'm saying? Um, sometimes I think Muslims um get looked at as as oh like like or at least held maybe to like a higher moral standard almost because kind of everybody sees their faith as you know as our faith as you know like uh like something that's very serious. You know, right? Exactly. Play with it. Not, but know? not for nothing. Muslim brothers is like. I, I hold Muslims to a high standard myself. Word. I think a lot of people do. I do. I'm not gonna lie, because when I went to the mosque with you, it was a it was a different type of experience, not in a negative way, in a positive way. I felt something at the mosque that I ain't feel at church. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I ain't grew up with no religion, right? So when my household, you walk in there, there's nothing talked about. No God, no Jesus, no Muhammad, no Buddha. Nothing. We don't pray. We don't talk about God. Nothing. So when I went to the mosque, it was like open, free. Like like when I went to church and then when I went to the mosque, it was just like me going on my own with like really no, you know what I mean? I just wanted to see what it was. Word. You know what I mean? So, Word. yeah. So but basically my experience there when I went, it was just like, yo, we got with the Muslim brothers. We talked. We got in the car. I was like, yo, we... Where you going? Like oh, then yeah, we went I to the remember, one. I remember now that about. one doctor. It was like a one doctor Muslim. That recently moved in the area. Yeah, he got a nice house. He let me in. He let us all in. Offered us tea. Give us snacks. Snacks. <laughs> and I'm like, and at that time too, I wasn't really doing too well. And I'm like, wow, like just being like in this type of environment was different. Were, and uh, yeah, but the the community is great, man. Um, you know, just being around people like that. You know, um, that are like highly skilled um you know they got high you know very very high connections exactly you know what i'm saying and that's good to it, have it is it is it is definitely that's good to I, have i can say i definitely benefited um uh, from being part of that community myself you know so but back to nba young boys and the youth man that's um all of us you know all of us are scared really for the youth um the youth is in all, in all the different communities, the black community, uh, the Muslim community, all the different communities. The youth is like the topic everybody is, is focused on. It's because on. we have to understand like a lot of these kids are being raised like their parents is just almost as like their age kind of like like the, the, the age difference, the gap between like parents and kids now is really not a lot. So it's like me and my mom, we only 17 years apart. You know what I'm saying? So it's like 
Like, yeah. My, I mean, my, my, my I mean, to, to be honest, I, my mom had me when she was 18. Okay. Um, you know, doing the internet, bro. And all that. But <clears throat> it's the internet. But even, yeah, but like, I think too, it's like, uh, but nowadays, kids nowadays who are having kids that young are not mature at all. Like, my mom, when she was 18, I'm sure she was way more mature the other 18 than, year olds. than these 18 year olds nowadays. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like a whole different, it's a whole different era, it's a whole different time. You know, so uh, so I don't. But what I was trying to say is, I don't think being a young parent um, is really the the um, the problem. I, I'm gonna you tell know? you something. I I don't know because when my mom was a young parent, she used to let us run around wild. Oh, for real? Yeah, we wasn't. Nah, we we we, we, used, we used to we used to just run around wild, bro. We used to run inside the kitchen at restaurants. We used to run around Kmart. This was in Jersey. Yeah, run around Kmart. Taking stealing toys, my mom ain't saying nothing. She ain't care, you know. <laughs> She's a young. She was she was a young mom. <laughs> I should say, I guess the young young parents in America. I guess. Yeah, probably young parents in America. <laughs> young parents in America. <laughs> um, but the yeah, NBA I, young boy thing, yeah, I think is that is I think it's a it's a it's a mixture of like the internet, like what type of situation you in, and then what type of mindset you have because. If we're gonna let somebody from far away that's rich and famous, that's not even doing nothing he's talking about, trick you to like, you know, or like what's the word I want to influence you yeah. to doing something that you you know you really shouldn't be doing, it's just it's yeah. just bad. So it's bad with business. the with, with the Muslim youth, I don't I don't think they're exactly doing what NBA young boys is rapping about. But it's to me, it was just a shocking that they're they actually into listen that. to it. Yeah, they're into that, especially if you. Yeah, listen. they're not. They're not going out there. Well, I don't. I haven't seen it. I don't think they're going out there. Uh, you know, like, like creating beef with people or the whole thing with like carrying guns or maybe shooting down blocks. I don't. My question don't, is to you: <laughs> How you feel about Muslim rappers that's really actually doing that? Muslim rappers. You, you there, ever, there are there are a couple. Who, you ever heard of AR app? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know he's Muslim. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And he's a he's a demon. Right, and he's a demon. Yeah. To me, what you think about that? That's a touchy subject. That is a touchy <laughs> subject. I mean, we can we can speak about it. Yeah. The the whole Philly thing and like the Philly Muslims, they're very interesting, man. You know, um, they come from a different world. Yeah, the, the environment that they that they're in and like you know like the life like they and I mean I I've, I've I don't live in Philly so. I can't really speak about them, but from just what I see in here, um, I guess the life that they is it is a little weird and contradicting a bit. Like the life they they the, the the person that they are when they go to the mosque, and then when they leave the mosque, they're like a whole different person. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That that it's a problem, man. Like they they got to do better, and it's not like they don't know the dean, man. They know, cause I I mean I I heard even like speaking about Arab, like I've I've heard them. He heard him. like speak like yeah. like he quoting scripture like oh yeah yeah he know what he's talking about I'm like, okay so he knows what I'm trying to say like he's not like clueless like he knows scripture a bit I'm not saying he's like probably like up like, there up like, there like, up with, there, up with there, the knowledge or, like, with or whatever the, yeah but I know he know he probably know the basic the basic can take you far but it was like shock it's still shocking like how much he, the that, kind of life he still lived how right. he was still a drug dealer killing um, shooting people. Uh, kidnapping, uh, kidnap. He was Ex- extorting, uh, extorting niggas. everything. Uh, <laughs> he even, was doing it all. Yeah, bro, holding people for ransom. We said that kidnapping. Yeah, forcing people to do stuff and, uh, and that. And he was a even with females, like um, uh, whatever he was doing with females. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm sure was it right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is the, the the Philly Muslims, man. They're a bit contradicted, but. Shout out to the Philly Muslims. I know there there are a lot of good brothers out there though, you know, that are that are on Dean. There was a good brother from out there that that went on the Steve Harvey show. I can't remember his name. I mean, I don't remember his name, but he he was invited to the Steve Harvey show because he had stopped the fight on the street. And like that joint went viral because it was two youth, uh two youth wanted to fight each other. You saw that? Nah. Okay. It was two youth that wanted to fight each other. The brother came, he was he was trying to explain to them like, like this is pointless. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, good friends. Y'all about to fight each other, and then y'all gonna become enemies, and oh. you know, and it can be a, a snowball effect where and it leading turned, to like yeah, more turmoil worse, and you know shit like that. So he basically told them to like shake hands and just and just drop the beef. 
When was this? Which was really beautiful. This was a while. This was a long time ago, actually, okay. a couple years back. No, okay. but then he got he got in, the same dude got invited to uh, the Steve Harvey show. Harvey show. You know that gave him a little publicity, and then um, then from there he he did a good thing with it. He actually took off. Like he made it his own brand, where now people were inviting him to go speak at different places. Like even in the, within the Muslim community different mosques were inviting him to come speak to their youth That's because nice. they saw what he, did. What, he, what he did like live in the street like you know what I'm saying right and people need people need other like people like role that. models yeah, to like help out models, man. yo real quick real quick I don't want to really sidetrack but nah we quick, sidetrack this quick sidetrack this is off script <laughs> how you feel about Steve Harvey giving relationship advice and then his wife divorcing him and supposedly allegedly sleeping with the chef and the security guard, but he out here telling people how he should, you know, be in a relationship. What, what's your opinion on that? Steve Harvey. What's did you hear about that? Yeah, I did. I did. That's you know, crazy. Relationship is very complex. That's what I would say. She relationship is very complex. Um, and a lot of a lot of these uh relationship gurus that are out there online, you know, um uh like the same thing happened to Steve Harvey, it kinda happened to them. Like these guys are out here giving relationship uh, um, advice, but back home, like they have one of the worst relationship with their own wives. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's it's like they're living like a dual life. They're out here telling you, "Oh, uh, this is th- these are the the tips and tricks you gotta do to, to, to keep have a happy, happy wife." But they're out here. Well, when they go back home, like it's, it's they're hell. not even they're not even sleeping in the same bed with. It's them. hell, bro. Yeah, you know. So relationship is very complex. But I mean, uh, well, what I would say about the whole Steve Harvey situation, um, yeah, man, like it's you like what I would say about it is you can't you can't tell people like really exactly um, how to live their life. Exactly, you, know what I'm saying? you can always give advice, but it's like it's you like you can probably learn from it, but don't ever take it to like hundred percent because exactly, yeah, man, people are so different. And, Everybody's different. And it's, like the human life itself is just complex. Some, like, something somebody might like, another person can't stand. Exactly. So, you know what I mean? Relationship is complex, man. You know, even in my marriage, I'm I'm still I'm still learning, man. It's <laughs> Let me give y'all some crazy, advice. Bro. <laughs> and I ain't even married. Happy wife, happy life. Simple. That's what, they, that's what they say, but but how do you make your wife happy? That's, that's you, all you gotta do is just listen to her. What she say, man? I, I know an old head, man. It's say? it's it's my um it's my niece's grandfather and he been married with his wife probably like twenty plus years they old and then when they was about to leave he said some I asked him a question he was like oh I gotta ask the boss and he was talking about his wife all right <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about his wife and they've been with each other for a long time I gotta ask the boss <laughs> yeah and he really meant that you know what you know what some of the Muslim brothers at the Muslim said right they be, they they called their wife the government. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I got to report to the government. But the only thing is, though, like, I would say before, like, you get somebody that title of being a boss or the government or, like, you know, whatever, you got to be the right one that for you. Right. You, it has to be the right person that you're willing to listen to. Exactly. Yeah. Because if you, if you're gonna that's strip- a hard thing for guys. Even for me, bro. Like, my wife be telling me stuff to do. I be like, sometimes I just be like, oh, my God. Like, Chill out, bro. Yeah, like you sleep alone. But you need them now. But uh, you would definitely do need them, and uh, you need them definitely. Um, but yeah, it, it's a hard thing for guys. I think when they're, you know, when you're always being told what to do, it's not like a thing. Like I feel like guys just get really easily irritated with that, exactly. You know what I'm saying? But, it, but who would you rather? Who Who would you rather like listen to though? Like right, yo, you, I guess you gotta have somebody to listen to. Exactly right? because like <laughs> she's the one who's doing everything for you that nobody else is doing. So of us will do. That's a fact. That's a fact. So you gotta, we gotta take it easy and, and kind of just ease just, up. Just, just yeah, just, ease up. Just keep them happy. Just exactly do it to keep them happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Relationships and and females, man, is a very complicated thing. It, I think it's a it's a life long. Um, learning experience, yeah. Like, um, like I know I haven't one of my 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 uh, my oldest uncle. Like <laughs> when I was getting married, um, he was like, yeah, um, like I I can't I can't give you no advice, like, cause he was already divorced. For real? Yeah. So <laughs> he's like, damn. He feels like he well, it's his whole thing is he feels like he can't give me advice he because he has been divorced. So 
but he he could give you advice of where he think things went wrong exactly you know what i'm saying but i mean i was in accent but it was just i think it was just in conversation um and and kind of how he felt like he's basically what he's trying to say is like women are really complicated just just try your best and figure it out that's <laughs> that's what he said that's what he said just figure it you out you gotta man. be flexible you do you do man um, i don't think i want to get married bro yeah i don't think i want to get married i want to be with somebody forever but like what's the point of like i feel like what's the point of getting married yeah like if i love you on taxes it saves you on taxes i think so yeah if you file like uh like uh i think it's called like dual whatever if you file with your wife yeah or whatever no, there, there's a way you do it where it can like bring it can bring you in a lower tax bracket <laughs> i didn't know that but i don't want to yeah. get married but now nah, i'm just saying that's like you ask you ask uh, what are the what are the benefits of, of being married that's yeah. definitely a benefit i think for a lot of people lower taxes is good but the thing is it seems like everybody that gets married and then like you just say you divorce yeah. seems like it's more of a problem than, than anything but yeah what's yeah. the chances what's the odds of you really sticking with one person forever very low. I mean, to to what the the not the the data is telling us today is a very low low chance. And it's probably low because of social media. I think yeah, it's lower. Social than, media has a big effect for sure. I, because I like your girl scrolling, she's seeing niggas down her timeline all day. <laughs> so if you get on her nerves, no shirt on, huh? With no shirt, on. shirt on, no shirt on, and you gotta think about it. When your girl opens up her messages, it's probably like fifteen guys in there. So she got options. Yeah, man. So what does that mean? Do we is there is is there like what can the guy do? Is there a way we can be better? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. Cause you never know, bro. <laughs> you never know, bro. I hope because like and especially in today's days, bro. Like people are just not loyal, bro. It's unfaithful. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to find that one, man. It's hard. I haven't found one. I thought I found one, and and it just went really, really sour. Speak about that, man, if you don't mind. It was like, yo, like, we was together, and shit. I think when two people are really not supposed to be together, it causes a lot of friction. One, if you get with somebody and you see red flags that is red flags for you, personally, you got to get out of there. ASAP? ASAP, because it's only going to get worse. Nothing's going to change. So, like, just say... Let's just say you meet somebody and they roll emotional or whatever. Cry, scream, hit, whatever. People are crazy. Mm -hmm. You got to get out of there. Anything that you don't like that's really bad or th you think could potentially get bad, you got to go. Because it's only going to get worse. And I'm only speaking from experience. But don't they say, like, when you get married, don't they say it's uh, no, supposed you, to be for better and worse? So death threw us apart? How much you want to take? Like, what? What? Are, how much are you willing to, like, to take that's worse because at the end of the day you know why i feel like that is like you only got you we only got one life mm -hmm. so how much of your life you're going to spend unhappy with a person because you said for better or worse the you, death throws apart it's a death us apart so if you're going to be miserable for the next 30 years are you going to be willing to be miserable for the next 30 <laughs> years you do um, have a point but the and and that's the thing that um that's the that's the, that's what we see though nowadays is that uh you know especially the youth they're not they're not doing it bro it, nah. they feel unhappy they're boop they're quick they're out of there man yep yeah, out of there quick you know somebody one of them 15 guys in the dms or you know yeah what I mean? yeah there's somebody yeah. else to go to i guess That's quick it it's yeah easy. there's there's like a mcmills hitting you up ready to uh being fly you out you know it don't even saying? gotta it don't even gotta be meek mill like she can see somebody that she think is cute where you know what i mean and that's it it's always it's a wrap. Wrap. <laughs> but once that would happens, would you say if you? I know you say you you wouldn't get married, but if you were if you were married, would you allow your uh, your partner to have social media? Yeah, you know, just do the right thing. That's it. Because if I marry you, that means I trust you. Word. Yeah. So you wouldn't be too restrictive. No, yeah. but you know, I would. Yeah, I do would the right thing. I, I mean, yeah, I would. I would like my wife's like, yeah, I don't like she be on social media. Like, yeah, I don't want to be controlling. Yeah, because at the end of the day, we got our own lives to live. Word, and yeah. I, I think I think it makes it worse if you're like the type of guy that'd be like, "Oh no, nah, you can't do this, you can't do that." She gonna want, she's gonna want to escape you, man, and exactly. want to see what's outside. If you do that, she gonna want to, she gonna want to run away from you, probably like faster. A, 
like a track yeah. star. <laughs> <laughs> but a, a lot of guys do that though. You know, a lot of guys fumble the ball doing that. You know what I mean? They like get too controlled. I know. I'm, I have a friend like that. She said her man was mad controlling and and just like you know what I mean, want to restrict her. She can't have social media and all this. And that one friend, you know her. I ain't gonna say. Yeah, no name, no name, no name. Okay. You know what I mean? And she looks good. Put the mic. Huh? Put the mic. Uh, you're gonna edit that part out, right? <laughs> no, no, it's not gonna get picked up. Uh, no, yeah, it won't get picked up at all. So you're you gonna, so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it it's all good. It's all, you know, they won't even hear my man's hitting the balls here. I okay, think. all right. So yeah, so like she said, her man was mad controlling, and she left that nigga. Oh, for real? she did. Was it? Was it the homie? Was it the big homie? Nah, this yeah. is like some. Somebody... I thought I thought she was gonna get married to the big homie. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, big big <laughs> homie is running around. I mean, like, have you seen Big Homie for a while? Nah, I haven't just... seen. I see, I haven't seen Big Homie for a minute. Okay. Shout out, shout out, Big well, man. Shout Everybody Big Homie, man. We miss you, man. <laughs> <Or, laughs> uh, be safe out there, bro. Uh, but I right, so we're talking about relationship, mm -hmm. and uh, I kind of forgot where we. Oh yeah, the controlling John. Oh, the controlling. Yeah, man. Drunk. I feel like you just like nowadays, bro. Like, like, um, like the whole social media thing is is a game changer, but. Um, the best way to go about it, bro, you just got to give them freedom. And what I would say is that, you know, if, if she's meant for you, y'all going to be together. If and not. If she's not, you know what I mean? It's and then not, let's even think about it, out. too. Like, if she's not meant for you, just understand, it's a billion fishes in the sea. Word. Billion. And for billion. <laughs> colors, flavors, shapes, Word. sizes. How many, how, many, how many human beings right now? I think it's definitely way up in the billy. Billy's, yeah, you know what I'm like saying. Billy. So if if the man don't work out for you, or if the woman don't work out for you, yeah. don't stress it too don't kill much. Yourself, you know what yeah, I mean? it's not, because it's not over, man. when I was, I had a relationship problem, like where I was depressed. You know what I mean, relationship she, can make you that. It can make you very, very. Depressed. But no, but listen though, she did me foul. She, she did, did me foul. foul. She was out there. She was a track star. She was running outside. She was going <laughs> wild. She was going wild. You know what I'm saying? She's a track star, and I was depressed. Like. Very, very depressed, and at that time in my life, I really, really were you. Were you being controlling? Were you being controlling? Was I all? being controlling? Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Okay. Maybe a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. Maybe I was being a little controlling. Okay. But even still, even if I was, she right, was st right, right. still she a track star. Respect that. But yeah, man, don't do me foul. Just leave me for real. Don't word, play. Don't word. play with my heart. Don't play with my feelings like that. Yeah, man, that's like one of the biggest effects about relationship and. um you know, that's why, like, our faith background really don't uh, encourage dating. It's know, marriage. At a, especially at a young age or whatever, but even dating at all. Uh, but, yeah, it's marriage. Marriage. You know, because if you sit down and talk to somebody about marriage, like, you know it's for real, for real. Like, that's, Is it that's really, the, though? I don't even think it's really for real, for real, because you know why? <sighs> because of how much people that's married are, you know, stepping outside their marriage on a regular basis. Probably a lot, um, a lot. But but what I'm trying to say, what what I mean by that though is like, um, it's a commitment that you have to make. Yeah, sitting, going visiting somebody's family, you know, getting to know their dad and and parents, is different from you just skipping. You're not doing that, and you just linking. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole different situation. Nah, yeah, it's a whole yeah. different situation. It kind of puts more responsibility on the guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, okay, like you to actually hold you down. met this this latest family now like so you're gonna and then internally that's gonna try to it's gonna actually force you to be more responsible like take care of her well treat her a little better um you know and just do the right things you know what i'm saying it just kind of like uh i guess push you to do the right thing man i just you speak, definitely speak from experience because you're a married man yeah so i don't understand that yeah I well that it's world. yeah <laughs> If, if, it really forced you to take the relationship serious. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, like when you go into it like that, it's not as easy to be like, oh, like, oh, like, damn. Like, uh, I can like, just get out of here. She pissed me off. All right, let me just. We don't got no commitment. Rap. I, I ain't going to hit her up anymore. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, That's nah. your wife. <laughs> yeah. Like, nah, because, because the next day, your, your fam somebody in your family is going to ask you, hey, how is, how is this person? How is she doing? You know? And even as vice versa, somebody's gonna ask her in her family, "Hey, how's how's uh, how's Abu doing?" Right. Whatever. 
and that's just how it is. And then if she brings it up, they'll be like, nah, like, you know what I mean? You got to <laughs> you gotta hit them up or y'all got to get together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't want... You don't so want... The, the family's there too to like push. Yeah. To push y'all together and like instead of pushing you apart. As long as it's a good family. Right? Yeah, because you can come from... It's all theory, but as long as it's a good family, that's that's kind of what tends to happen. Okay. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, there's relationship is, like I said, I'll say it again. Relationship is very complex. It can go either way, bro. It and everybody's different. Way, man. Yeah. So what works easy. for somebody, one might couple not is you. not gonna work, might not work for you, like you know what I mean, you or, and your partner. Have you with all these uh with all these dating advice and like relationship gurus online, um, do you have like like do you, uh um would you give anybody credit that you that you think was interesting or like probably knew what they were talking about? Nah. Have you came across any of those guys that you know what I'm talking like about? Like online? Yeah, online, you know. No. No. Okay. Not at all. I can't. I don't I don't know nobody off the top of my head. Cuz I can't even sit here and fake it with you like that. Yeah. I don't know no, nobody. Okay. Yeah, no. There are a bunch of them out there. You, I mean, you don't be online like that, but nah. yeah, there's a bunch of them out there, man. I'm in my I'm I'm gonna tell y'all right now everybody that's watching. I'm in my own world, okay? <laughs> world, I'm world. I'm not, I don't even know what's going on in the world. <laughs> but like <laughs> Ukraine and what's the other what's the other war going on right now? Yeah, Palestine, Israel. Bro. Yeah, Palestine. Israel. Yeah, all that. I'm, that's not me, man. I'm. I live in Allentown. What's going on in Allentown? I still don't even know what's going on in my town. All right. <laughs> this is what I do. I get up, I go to work, and I come home, and I watch basketball. And on the weekends, I pick my daughter up, and we just hang out. And and that's all I do. So any current events right now, for for I don't really. It's because it's too much going on, man. Yeah. People say it's important to understand and know what's going on. But to me, I was just like, I don't know what's going on right now. And I feel like I'm all right. Ain't nothing changing. You think it's, it, you think it's stressful to like keep up with like what's going on, especially with, with, with big media? No, because it's not stressful because I don't pay attention to no, it. I'm saying if you did, is that why you don't do it? You no, think I just don't do it because I'm like I said, I'm just in my own world. world. You know what I mean? Like if the gas go up and shit like that, then the gas go up. If the food go up, the food go up. I, whatever I know is not going to control it going up or down. So it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? To me, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, you could say that's like, what, like ignorant, I guess. <laughs> like, but shit. I, you, you, Abu knows a lot. Abu knows a lot what's going on in this world right now. Current events and all of that. <laughs> what Abu knows is not controlling anything that's going on. Like, he just knows. You know what I, I mean? Just know, yeah. Yeah. But they do say, instead of current event, but like even history, right? They say... <laughs> Those who know the past, um, uh, I guess, get rewarded in the present. After that, something like that. Those who know the past or history get get rewarded in the present. Meaning, I, like you can take advantage, or at least you could put yourself in a better situation because you know what had happened in the past. Exactly. I I I, could, I feel like I could agree with that because, like, what somebody else did, you could like you know took what they did and. Make, remix it to your own way and not make the mistakes of like other people like for an example I'm gonna give you an example I ain't, I ain't really mean to do them like that but we're gonna just have to talk about my dad real quick we're gonna shout out shout out to you oh shout out pop I'm gonna shout you out real quick but look give you an example for, this is for what you're talking about okay like from like learning some from the past to the future Word. all right so this has been going on forever people been having babies you know forever having kids and stuff like that yeah so, like, my dad, he has kids with multiple women, all right? And he's basically, like, a rolling stone, all right? So, me, I understand. i seen that growing up. I understand. I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? My dad all stressed out, crying to me about child support. Can't even have a conversation <laughs> without this man. Be like, yo, bro. Are you, are you the oldest he got? No, nah, I, uh, I got a couple older oh, siblings, okay. but... You know, I'm the oldest from, like, being an outside kid. So my dad had a whole family, stepped out his family, made babies and shit like that. I was one of those. I was one of them. Okay. So this nigga crying about child support. Bro, take me off, man. Tell your mom, take me off child support, man. <laughs> and it's like, bro, can we just have a regular conversation before we talk about that? I ain't see you since I was, I ain't see you in five years. You know what I mean? Can we just talk about something real quick? <laughs> you feel <know what laughs> me? So, <laughs> Damn, so when y'all like when y'all uh met up or linked up, he was he was he was asking for you to like uh yeah, convince the, your mom to take you to take him off child support. And the thing was, like <laughs> at, at this time, mind you, everybody that's watching us, that 
I'm 18 years old now. So, like, as an 18 year old young man, I kind of understand what he's saying. Yeah. You know, because, right. like, let's just say I was dealing with somebody and then, you know, that type of thing happened. Like, having a baby, I have somebody I didn't really want to have a baby with. Yeah. And now the mom got me on child support and it's just like a whole bunch of bullshit. I wouldn't want to be on child support. So I was like, yo, ma, take this man off child support. She was mad. Oh, you told your mom's that? Yeah. Oh, right. Because I was like, yo, if he's going to talk to me, he's going to talk to me. If he's not, he's not. It is what it is. Like, yeah. You feel me? It is what it is. You going to talk to me or you not? That's on you. Like, So I took him off and yeah, he, we've been talking since. So your, your mom listened to you? Your mom she did it. Home? She did it because I was like, yo, like, she not at this point, she's not even, she said when we, she, I'm not getting no money from child support. You know what I mean? So what's the point? Like, okay. I'm 18 years old now. What's the point of me being on? I'm a grown yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to work. I thought I thought legally, um, the the hus- the father wasn't responsible for child support at 18- when the child turns 18. I think it's today 21 because it's if they 21. go to college, oh. it extends. Okay, I thought it was 18. My bad. Yeah, it extends when they when they go okay, to college and stuff. You know, you. you know, I went to school a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like okay. two semesters. Okay, okay. So it was, yeah. <laughs> but yo, nah, that's that's love though, man. You know what I mean? That you were willing to take your pocket. Take them off because, like, you going to talk to me man. or you not going to talk to me? Yeah. Word. That's it. Word. That's on you. You're going to make that choice on your own. And and if you don't, fuck it, bro. I'm going to just keep Word. it pushing. So you were, you were like, you were being open and you were giving them that, like, that freedom of, Cause like, I'm, whatever happens, happens. Yeah, I'm 18 years old. I'm outside. I understand what happens when, you know, you're running around being outside. That's love, though, man. Yeah. Shout, love, shout out to you, Pop. Or, and I'm, uh, shout out to Mom Dukes, too, for, for, for yeah, listening to Yeah, shout out to Mom Dukes. Like, and like, a lot of moms or females won't do that, bro. I, yeah. I understand why they wouldn't do that. Because if you got a man that's not taking care of his kids, why would I, why would I spare you, bro? Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> 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 you gotta look at that both sides. You do, you do. But yeah, once again, shout out to my shout, shout out, shout out, my <laughs> to your point. Yeah, definitely. it's hard, bro. To your point, like it is, single it is. moms have it hard, you know. They do. And you know, it's like everybody had a, a role to play in of uh, the kid, like the yeah. mom, the dad, and it's not right for the mom and that, like the dad to leave the mom, like. Word. Like, no, you can me. leave the mom, but you got to be there for take your care kid. Of your kids, for I definitely agree with that. Yeah, you man. Take care of your kids. So if you're not willing to take care of your kids, man, make sure you, you do the right thing. Or, or strap up. Yeah. <laughs> strap it up, dog. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next time, be a little more. Yeah, you know I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Mm-hmm, I, 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 I want to keep it clean as much as possible as well. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of your kids. Track, cool. All take my care. friends, all my friends that I have, take care of their kids. Yeah, I don't got no friends that you know they don't uh, take care of their kids. The big homie, speaking about the big homie, that was something that uh, that he did, and w- the way he he like stepped up, like was took ready care of his daughter to full take time. Care of his daughter, like hundred percent. Like I was like, wow, that's that's uh, he's a real man. Ins- yeah, that was that was inspirational. That was dope. That's sad that you like know? because the- I mean, I, when we were that young, bro, that's like that was something scary. That was something that. I didn't like. I was praying not to be in any kind of situation like that. Me, yeah, me you too. Know what I'm saying so. Me too. Him, we being that young, and he was like, he never even second guessed it. Like he was straight. Nah, she thing. mine. I'm ready to take her 100. And I'm not even gonna lie. 100. I think in this day and age, like in the times that we live in now, I think that men are taking care of their kids more than in the past. From the past, yeah, from back then. Yeah. So that's. Hey, bro, I think that's a positive change then, huh? It's a good change. That's a positive change, man. It's a good change. We need You know that. what, too, though? But I, I think we, we grew up with a, we're very interesting people, bro. Like, like we, we grew up with some men, bro. Like, just like our man circle. Like, yeah. a lot of the homies, bro, are men. Like, bro. What you mean? What you like, like, like how we are right now? Like, just behavior-wise. Like, just how we behaved and, like, how oh, we yeah. went about, like, our situations and, right. and challenges in life. Like, I mean, for everybody I can think about that kind of we we grew up grew up with, we're doing good, are doing good. But even I'm saying like when they face challenges, we get through um, it. In that, uh, even from a young age, or when they face big challenges, they got through it, or they were they were willing to step up to the plate as men and take care of their business. Exactly. Like an example, like like the big homie, he had a daughter. Whatever happened with with him and the baby, baby my moms. moms. Um, you know, like whatever happened, they didn't. I guess like they didn't want to be together. But he was willing to to take, take custody, hundred percent custody of his daughter. Of his daughter. So that that's 
That's that's that's being a man. She with him right now. She with him right now. Right well, now. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> I Shout out to the big that. homie. <laughs> she with him right now. She he take care of her full time. That's what's up. Well, that's what I mean though. Like he's a man, bro. He's a like, man. He's a man. That's that's what men do. You know what I'm saying? A lot of dudes, well, <clears throat> from like from what we know and hear about, a lot of dudes don't do that. A lot of dudes. Bro, I know a oh, lot. Oh, nah, of, she not mine. You know I know saying? a lot that, of that, people. That, that baby ain't mine. Like you hear that a lot. I know a lot of people. I ran into a lot of like, like I know a lot of females that their kids don't have a dad. Like they have a dad, but their dad is just a ghost. You know what I'm saying? Like, they never seen their dad one time in their life. Yeah. Or if they did, they see him sporadic three years. Like, I see you. Like, with my dad. I used to see my dad, like, every five years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I was like. I lost my dad, so. No, I'm my sorry to hear that. Different, but yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure your dad would have been there if he was, yeah, if he he was still alive. It, it was a different situation. It's but yeah, different. it was a different situation. Yeah. yeah it's crazy. It's crazy, it's crazy how American dads are. Not even American dads. I'm saying like American black dads. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you just got to be real, bro. Or, it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. It's just it is what it is. But the only thing, like I said now, like is a lot of people, it's changing. It's changing. Yeah, it's changing. Man. And like I was going back to like our like childhood and kind of some of the guys we came up with, bro. Like, do you understand they, now what I'm saying? All of us ain't like, have a dad. I have my stepdad. But well, all of us ain't have a dad. Our dad's in our life. That's Me, true. Me, you, yeah. Al, Jamal, Greg. Uh, who else? The list goes on. Mouse. No. Oh, Mouse. Mouse. Yeah. Jake has dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. dad. I haven't. I haven't yeah. No. I haven't. I didn't. I guess I didn't visit. He was probably always working though yeah. when I visited or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So look, that's like yeah, all that's our. Like, how much? I said five guys. We all ain't have our real dad. That's crazy. Yeah, or, that's good. When I was, I mean. But we still, we all, we all grew up and made it, man. You know what I'm saying? Worked it out. Yeah. I'm, all worked out. I'm proud of everybody. <laughs> I am. Shout out to everybody. Just, Shout you know, just man. named this shit. Um, yeah, bro. It's crazy, bro. Like, like hearing that stuff now, like the statistics and all that. Like, it's crazy. Like, how much, how much you think it influenced, like, how much of a disadvantage or if, even if it's a disadvantage to have like a single parent household, like you think it's a disadvantage or. Well, you, you know what I recently learned about that? What? And uh, and this is not to take any shot at like the the moms or, or the mothers out there. Cause you gotta think about it. They but, only could do what they can. Yeah, but 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 listen to this information that that that's kind of like, I guess flowing or making its way through the internet is, um, with uh, if like with like a fatherless household, it's in super disadvantage. Um, uh, but if it's if it's the father, if it's like the father without is, the mom, yeah, without the mother situation, um, the child. The the like the child would 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 grow up at a they said statistically like in a better situation, like just be just the dad being present. But why like you is can, weird. You, I don't. You I say don't, the dad I'm without the, the mom. Yeah, is higher it's without, a better situation than with the, the mom without the dad. Yes. That, why you think? Why you think is that? Um, it could be maybe because like guys are not as emotional. You know, it's more like logic and like uh. I guess just straight, just being they they could be stricter in terms of like behavior, like hey, mm-hmm. don't do this or do your homework, <laughs> and they're expecting you to actually do your homework, not say oh, play man, around. I have a headache. It's uh, some I don't more feel it's, well, or you know, you know, you know how kids yeah, play some yeah, games. But yeah, yeah, I definitely. Do. I don't. I don't know exactly what it is. I haven't really spent time like diving deep into the into the information, but they're saying that a situation where it's just a father at home, um, that child has a very high success rate of being successful. Uh, but if it's just a, if mom, it's an absent that, father, it's a very, very bad situation. Like um, that child uh, is very high, likely to go to prison, um, commit crime, or what? Yada yada yada. That's crazy. Um, but then the best is though. The best is obviously with a father and a that are and a, that are and a mother. yeah like a family like a, a regular family exactly because like coming parents like a father and a mother that's that regular the best but they're saying though from what they're saying too i think they're saying the the father is as equal as if it's dual two? parent yeah that's crazy that's crazy right can i can i do i i don't know just look into it i mean like i said i haven't dived deep into it but that i've, I've seen a lot of people quote that quote that line why I think is that? I'm Why do you gonna, think that is? Dude? What I notice though, I'm not even gonna lie. From personal experiences, when I see when women get new men in their life, and they got previous kids, mm-hmm. like from another man, but they get a new man, mm-hmm. 
I noticed that the women really be putting the man first before their kids. I noticed that. They be putting the man before the children. Yeah. Interesting. I noticed that. I'm not even going to lie. Like, when a girl really but likes... But isn't that weird? Because, like... um. That's really weird because don't like like we see even on social media that you know like usually like they they be showing these funny clips of like how a single mom meets like a new guy the first thing she introduced is her is her children you know and like sometimes <laughs> they like if it's if I guess if the children don't like supposedly like this is what it is if the children don't like the guy then most of the time she don't even give him a chance but it, I let me don't tell know, you man. something. If the if the mom likes the guy before the kids is involved, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, kids, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so from experience, that's what you're saying. Go to so bed, put them wow. to sleep. Maybe, so, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. They they do say uh, what what they say about love, like uh, love hurts. No, not not, not that low. Well, we can get into that too after this. <laughs> love hurts everybody. We we actually got to cut it at five, but um, right. we got like about fifteen minutes. We got what some time, time is it? Four forty-three. How long have we been doing this for? For like a little bit over an hour. Nice. I doesn't even feel like that. I'm just chilling. <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna leave soon. But um, what was I gonna say about the whole uh? Lost no, my truth. Because I said love hurts, and then oh yeah, the the thing about love, they say uh. Like, I guess when two people fall in love, right? Like, it's unbreakable. Um, unbreakable? Unbreakable. Or like, like, or like no outside influence can really stop it. Um, I, I've heard a quote about that. Like, when two people are really in love. I'm like, going to tell you something about like, that. Like, nothing can break it. Not even like culture, that's only, traditional. That's only when the love is at its all-time high. Like, true love. I'm talking about true love. True love. love. Yeah, yeah. Well, I ain't never been in true love then. Cause all that shit just been, pff, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's hard, so yeah, like it's I hard, think, man. I think, um, when you really, really in love, nobody, well, nobody, no, can't nobody tell you nothing about the person you in love with. That, that's what I'm trying to. That's yeah, what I'm trying it's to nothing get at. nobody so, can say. I'm in love with them. That's yeah, it. That's mine. So it, it, it also aligns with what you were saying about your, uh, what, what you think the whole situation is with the, with the. With like why I guess just a, a single mother household does worse than a than a father household. I think it aligns with what you're saying. You think you said earlier that it's the it's maybe it's because that uh, the the moms tends to focus a little bit more on the on the on, on the, the new man yeah um than the children and I don't know I'm saying that I guess really when when two people love each other is almost like. <laughs> Nothing really can stand in their way. That's what I'm trying to get at. Can't nobody make sense, right? <laughs> Let me tell you, something. nothing can stand in the way. Not even kids either. Kids, bro. That's crazy. The thing is, I think with the with the with the woman and the man and stuff like that, it's just it's all different types of love. It's like when you have a kid, you love your kid differently than you love your significant it's other. It's a different kind of love. Yeah, yeah. Your your significant other could do things for you that your kids can't do. Actually, your kids really can't do much for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Unless get you water. Yeah. Turn off the get light. Get you a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Pass me the remote. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Shit like that. You know what I mean? Uh, but but yeah. yeah, that makes a good point though. Um, the bro, kids is not gonna. Is there, the kids is not gonna pay the bills for you, bro. Yeah. yeah so like, if you're a single America, mom, that's the most important thing. If you're a single mom, right, and you got kids and you struggling, right, and then you you get a good man, got a good job, you know he's about his business. He just go to work and go home. Yeah, you know I mean, and you already know he's gonna be. He's like support. You feel me? Like that little support. You know what I mean? They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna do a lot for that man because he's gonna take he gonna hold it down. I know a couple single moms, man. Now all of them are struggling, but I know some. It's that's, tough. It's tough. It's hard, it's bro. Tough to be a single mom. That's the fact. It's hard. Bro. And then think about if you're a single mom and you got boys or a boy, the boy not gonna respect the mom like that. That's why the mom has to be harder on a little boy yeah. than a little girl, because boys is gonna get stronger and stuff like that, and yeah. it'd be harder to raise. I got a friend. Shout out Marcy. Marcy got a son, right? And his one son don't listen. And he be popping his ass. <laughs> right, and even if he pop him, he still don't listen. Now imagine, like if it was like it a, was a woman. Mom. Yeah, yeah. Word, word, word. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, and and uh, going back to the statistics that we're talking about with the whole household thing, you know, when we're talking about love too. There's different kind of love. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like a, a, uh, there's different kind of love, even with 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 children, uh, children love. Like, I think like the way a mother or even a father loves their son is a little bit different than how they would love if love if it's the child was a daughter. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. a dad is gonna have a soft heart for for a daughter. If exactly. It is. Um, a mom might also have a soft heart if it was a, if it's a son. Right. You know, it's almost like the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> effect, because um, I I think moms tend to be a little harder on their daughters, and then dads tend to be a little bit harder on their sons. Right. It's like the uh, you know what it's I'm the saying? opposite. Yeah. So like there's it's like there so we give up different kind of love to our children depending what gender they are right like with my daughter i can't be as well now she's a little older so you know you gotta be a little bit me i mean like a little more stern with her but when she was little it was more like (laughs) (laughs) it's just more 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 soft you feel me more soft because she's older now she understands more so like Gotta be a little more stern. Kids is kids is crazy. She's looking at me right now. Kids is crazy. <laughs> you decide. <that. laughs> yeah, man. Yo, bro, bro, we got like ten minutes. Uh, and we're gonna we, be done with the show. Yeah, we can. Segment. We ain't gonna be done with the show, man. He ain't kicking me out of here yet, man. <laughs> I ain't kicking you out. That's Milo's like, we gotta man. go. <laughs> now nah, we can we can go and chill up upstairs and watch the game. Okay, um, yeah. I think I'm gonna take her home. But that's she, that's cool though. I'm she, just saying. If you wanted to hang out, he said he want to go upstairs and watch our football. But I know you're ready to go. If you want it, but um, I was gonna say this last ten minutes. Um, we, you know, if you want to segment to a different topic or bring up any other points, I'm gonna say right now, bro. We living in a hard time, bro. And I'm I'm 29 years old. I started adulting when I was 19 because that's when I got kicked out the crib. And I'm not gonna lie, shit is way harder than it was back then, bro. So it's harder now than it was, than it back, was then. back then. First of all, there's not even as much jobs as it was like before. Mm. Well, I remember back then when I, when I was telling y'all earlier, I had a lot of temp jobs. I was able to get a job the next day. Now it's not like that. Now it's slowed up. You can't just get a job the next day. Like Why back is that? In, what know, do you I think? I, like, see, like I said, I'm not into like, I don't know what's going on in the world. So this is probably why it's important to so, know, so, so to understand <laughs> to know what's, what's going, going on. on. <laughs> so... I don't know why it's not as much jobs. All I know is it's not. I remember back in the day, I lose my job, and the next day I'm working somewhere else. Where? I'm working somewhere else. You're working somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember that though, man. Yeah. Like, bro, I wasn't used playing. To switch jobs like crazy. And then, yeah, and back it. then, I right, so I used to live in the same building, uh, like a few years ago, and it was cheaper. You're talking than, about right now. Yeah, I used to live at the Hamilton Towers on 4th Street, so y'all know. It's, it's like... You gotta get your location. Nah, right, right, I right, used right. to live there. Okay, yeah. Okay. Were, were, were. And I ain't ashamed <laughs> about where I came from and where I had to go through to get to where I get to get to. You feel me? Because everything I went through is part of my journey. And word, I love it. Word, man. I love it all. It makes you stronger, bro. Yeah, I won't, be, I won't be here. You know what I mean? I won't be who I am if I didn't go through what I, I went through. through so, like I was saying, like, things is more expensive you get less food now when you go to the supermarket. McDonald's is not, there's no more dollar menus. That's gas crazy, is right? over $3. Back, Back, if you go to 15th Street, there's a gas station that says a sign for gas, 189 189 Now or Before back COVID. In the day. Back in the day. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking right about. Right there. Like on, right across from the Wawa? No, by the McDonald's and stuff. Like, Around there, like by the if he was going to Trexler, the middle school. Yeah, there's a sign, an old gas station with the old sign on it, one eighty nine. Oh, but the, that gas station is not running. It's not running. Oh, no more. okay. I was gonna yeah. say, I was it's gonna not say, running no more. That oh, shit my is. Man's, my man's, he knows what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not running. It's not no running more. anymore. So life is really hard right now. So that's why I was telling y'all earlier. If you have a job, don't let nobody play you about what kind of job you got. As long as you got a check coming in every week, that's all that matters. Because when you don't go to work. Nobody in this world going to take care of you, especially if you're a man. Girls got a little more different because they females. But if you're a man, nobody wants you in their house. Nobody wants to help you. And niggas going to let you drown. That's All a right? fact. <laughs> That's a fact, bro. <laughs> like, it's hard. You're going to drown, man. bro. It's hard especially to Especially if you man, don't got no a support system. Like, yeah. I got lucky because I got my mom. You know what I mean? She helped me out 
Word. when I was really going through it from time to time. But you you got to go to work, bro. Don't call off for nothing. Only yeah. call off if you're sick. And not even if you're sick. Call off if you're burning up and you can't get out the bed. Go to work, bro. That's my advice to all the young guys out there. Go to work. Don't miss work. Because if you miss work, you're missing out two times, bro. You're going to get a point that's getting closer to getting fired, and your check is going to be less. So go to work. <laughs> you feel me? I had to learn, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, those are all great pointers. Um, you know, there's... Uh, yeah, man, I mean, that's, it's, I guess this is for a different view. I mean, a, a different, uh, you know, a, I guess a, a different point of view and um, and people out there, you know what I'm saying? But, um, but yeah, things are very hard. Even I, I, from experience, I can speak, too, about... Like how rent just been going up, bro. Yeah, like, bro. Like before, before I moved here, I mean, I've been here. I'm about to make a year soon, but before I moved to where I was at, I was paying eleven hundred for rent, and uh, I had a whole crib. It was a whole you. Oh, I, house. House. I never went. There was a bath, right? Yeah, yeah. I had a whole crib, three bedroom, literally a basement, a backyard, a uh, dr- little driveway. I can park like two cars out. But front. you, but you came to the city though, so that's a little different. Yeah, but I was kind of forced though. So what happened with my situation? My landlord ended my lease. They didn't. They didn't want to renew. And you didn't it. even do nothing wrong. And I didn't do nothing wrong. So what? Uh, what their plan was? I mean, I asked them too. I was like, hey, if y'all just, if y'all looking just to raise the rent on me, like, go ahead. Like, I already knew I was getting a good deal, so I didn't mind if they were even raising the rent. But I guess what they told me was their their business on their business side things were not going well. Okay. So I think their plan was was to really jack the prices up. Okay. Like, not they want to like, do you like that. Yeah. So they were just trying to get me out. Maybe they're gonna charge the next guy like sixteen hundred. Did he? I was paying eleven. They're probably gonna charge him sixteen hundred. For that spot at three bedroom, they can probably get easily eighteen hundred. Like nothing. That's where. That's Easy. um the they place where you met the dude from jujitsu. Like the cop guy no, or whatever? No, 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 no. Oh, that's somewhere, that's somewhere no, no, different? No, no, yeah. This was my own spot. It was a whole crib to myself. But you know what I'm talking about though, right? You met somebody, like the jiu-jitsu guy. He was like a cop or something. And he, and he like basically looked out for a crib. Or am I wrong? Oh, yeah. This was somebody I was training with. I, 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 he, he had a, they call it like a, like a, um, I forget what it's actually called, but like a loft. He had a loft um, that was attached to his main house. It was basically a one bedroom. But it came with a living room, uh, came with a living room, bathroom, kitchen, and all that. Yeah. Um. So he ended up. He. I mean, he was his. All his kids are old. He's just home with his wife. And right. They, they both work. So he was like, "Hey, like, if you're looking for a place, and I was at the time, he said you can rent this off me, <laughs> and I was paying him like like six hundred a month. Oh, that's for he, the loft. Yeah, that was for the okay, loft. Okay. I was paying six hundred a month. He he gave me everything too, like Wi Fi for free, cable, that's nice. TV. Job. That's a good brother, right there. I was there. chilling, bro. <laughs> That's a good brother. And I was able right to thing. save. Those were good times. I wish, I wouldn't say I wish I had that now because there was a little, it was, it was tough commuting because uh, he lived pretty far out. So my ride would be like 45 minutes to my spot and then um, back to my job, bro. That was, I don't, I don't like driving. I don't real like quick, driving like real that. quick. Like, um, how many, you got like five minutes? Oh, no, we go, we go, we got, we got like four. Where you go? All right, real quick. So like they were saying like right now all the policy, Prices for houses is like skyrocket. skyrocket. Interest rate is as high. Like they said, supposedly it's supposed to be dropping. Do you see it dropping anytime soon? I don't think so because if it's, houses don't go down, they go up. Houses can go down if there's a crash. If like if a lot of people foreclose right on their homes, mm-hmm. the, the 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 real estate market will crash, which will um which will cause prices to go down on on homes. It had it happened before, like supposed to be like in two thousand and eight. I didn't know shit at that time. I was I was a young boy. I was still in school. Yeah. But that's what the data was showing. Like, uh, that that was like the last recession. I guess we had or whatever. We need one of those. Come second. back. I'm trying <laughs> to get a buy house. A house. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm not buying a house until. Are you up? Are you up? Ready though to take advantage of recession? Not right now, but I, I trust me. 2024 and beyond is yours. Yeah, we you we it? gonna we gonna go crazy because I learned, you know. Over yeah, time. but it's just um, you know. Um, it's really tough and really hard to save the like right now, and that's the thing. I'm trying my best, but me too. I'm kind of hoping that because I'm looking for a house too. I'm kind of hoping that the market does crash, like you know, and uh, so I can kind of get like get a good deal. Because right now, bro, I wouldn't even. I don't have the mind to go buy a house. Right me now. neither. Everything is up like crazy. Like not even what it's worth. 
Not and even then, with his and, and then if you go take a loan too, like the interest rate is at at all time highs. Like that is wilding. Anybody who's anybody who's going out to take a loan right now to to buy a, a, a house or whatever or any or anything, period, a loan for whatever. The interest gonna be high. Wilding. Yeah, yeah, wilding. I think whenever that time do comes, I'm trying to get a multi unit joint so somebody could pay my 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 mortgage. Who you got? Who just, you got that idea from? I don't. Did I get it from you? <laughs> I've probably heard it from a lot of people, <laughs> but that's where I'm going. When, when that time comes, I want like a joint that has four units in it. I live in one, and we that's cash. A, out. It's a smart idea, man. We cash out on the other three. That's that's the goal. I got to fix my credit and Word. save money, Word. but that's all gonna come in time. I've been trying to save, but like I said, it's really hard with the whole economy, man. It's tough. It's a marathon, man. baby. Is it is a marathon, right? Just put as little as you can. Whatever you can, make sure you just do it. Life. And not only that, bro, like don't and don't compare yourself. I'm not saying you do, but whoever's watching, yeah. don't compare yourself to nobody else. That's a fact. Everybody has their own story. Everybody's gonna get it their own way. Everybody has not, their own struggle. Yeah, your own struggle is not gonna be the same as the next person. So don't worry about what whatever anybody else got going on. Worry about what you got. Be happy about what you have. Appreciate what you have. That's and be fact. grateful. Yeah, man. Yeah, and your time could change any moment. At any moment, man. It could be your time. Any moment. It could be your time. Last time. year or, yeah, last year, two years ago, I was struggling bad. Struggling bad. Real bad. And now you're doing better, man. I'm doing better. Much sure. better. You sure. see my stomach? <laughs> <laughs> you eating good now? <laughs> yeah, we eating good now. <laughs> doing much better. I'm happy better. for you, though, Rel, man. I'm happy I appreciate for you. It. And, uh, and, um, we're going to close out here. But, yeah, man, you know, keep grinding with the job and just keep getting keep better. Keep working. With it eventually. Are you are you interested in owning your own truck? Like Not right now, no, thing? because I learned that that shit is really expensive. So the only way in I'm going to... In terms gonna, of running it, right? Okay. Yeah, because if anything yeah. break down, you have to have money to make sure you get your truck up back and running to keep going. To make more money. Diesel is high. Uh, rates are low. Like, a rate is like what you get. Like, for the low, you get paid for. So it's not evening out. So, no. I don't want it, that. It doesn't make sense right it now. It don't make sense. Yeah. I think what makes more sense is the multi-unit thing so I can live for free and make money at the same time. But even that, though, you have maintenance costs. Maintenance, thing, but like the, the house is... If, if I have four four units, I live in one, three people's paying it, that's maintenance money right there. You know what I mean? But you got a, you got a, you got your mortgage to pay. The bank the They bank paying it. The money. They paying it. Yeah, but like, it can't be two, though. If you this, can't, this is what I'm saying, Abu. For a month, come right... Like they, like, they give you a check, right? The bank... The bank is also giving you a check, like, hey, you could, you gotta pay us. I mean, they're they're sending you an invoice, the bank, right? Mm-hmm. And then you got your check. You're like, I gotta pay the bank. Or imagine that, oh, you gotta like, you gotta replace the roof. But like, like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you you're know saying. What like, basically, what I'm saying is, if if I have three other units, all my money from like, they're gonna be paying it, bro. <laughs> they're gonna be. I'm, don't worry, it's gonna work out. Trust me. You did the math. You, yeah, you, I did the math, bro. Out. It's gonna work out. <laughs> Everything's gonna work out the no, way. No, bro, supposed. that's uh, you know, real estate is a great investment. Um, yeah, man. You know, it's a great investment. Cause I'm tired of I'm, paying I'm motherfuckers learning. rent. Are you handy? Are you like, can you fix? Them? I'm not handy. Every time I have a problem, I call my brother. He's handy. He's handy, and my stepdad. Okay. Those are the well, handy. At, guys. at least you have people like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but the, it's better to get be handy yourself. It is. Well, you can learn. Like when you call them to do a job, don't you learn? It annoys me. No, I don't even pay attention. I don't like doing none of that. <laughs> I don't want to read a manual. I don't want to do nothing. I just want somebody to do it for me. <laughs> but you know, it, I'm laughing, but it's really not funny because I'm um, honestly those are those kind of people like that. You guys pay way, you guys pay way more money like throughout the year. You yeah. guys spend way more money throughout the year. Yeah. Than somebody who's handy who can fix it. Yeah, do it on their own. I'm, their, I'm just not handy. You know what I saved money on recently? What? Like uh, my my Honda my Honda a fit. The, mm-hmm. My uncle broke my broke the window. Like he slipped. Was from what he told me, he was like slipping. He he had the car for a little bit. For whatever he said, he was like slipping, and he was trying to hold onto the car, and then his elbow somehow went into like that quarter window, the one in the back. Okay, the little small joint, yeah, little triangle, so, whatever. But yeah, so he didn't even want to replace it. So you know, uh, like it's it's about to winter is coming. Um, you know, and it's raining more, and I don't I don't want water getting in the car. So I took I took action on you know I took action I went to the junkyard fixed it you know, no no I went to the junkyard to get a new window to, to basically get a new glass to get the new glass mm-hmm. and I I mean he kind of helped me out like with with some instruction he told me 
I can get a toolkit from like uh, Harbor Freight to remove a window. And I went to Harbor Freight. I got the kit. It comes with like a wire and like two handles. Mm-hmm. So I went to the junkyard. I was able to get the window out. <laughs> and you didn't have nobody. You didn't have to pay for nobody to do that for you. No, I was there by myself. Real quick, I have to. I have to shout out D Nice too, because D Nice is another man that I call when I have a problem, <laughs> and he comes and he saves my. Does day he have every- a YouTube channel? No, like I, uh, he's just I, a, I said, my stepdad and my big brother, but oh, okay. nah, D Nice comes through too. I have to shout him out because okay. my cars get stuck in my my keys get stuck in my car. He's opening it. I got a broken window. He fixing it. Anything. Oh, D Nice comes. Your, he's your car guy. He's your mechanic. He's, he's my old head, but okay. yeah, he does everything. He's word. a Swiss Army knife. That's what's up. Yeah. Yo, people like that. You know how much money they save, bro. You know. Yeah. That's why. I mean, I had. I had, I'm thankful. I had a little experience with um, work being a maintenance guy. Yeah. So if I'm being a maintenance guy, I'm I'm used to fixing you things handy. on my own. Yeah, I yeah. Became handy. Um, and I mean, like for the youth out there, honestly, if y'all want to become handy, like once if you like if you ever have problems with your car or anything, this is how I learned coming up. Like when my uncle was working on my car when I was a young boy, I was right there next to him, like trying to figure out what he's doing, why he's doing it, what See? tools. Like he'll be telling me to pass him the tools. That's, I was right there learning the tools just from helping them get going to the toolbox or grab me a fill-up, grab me a wrench, or grab me this, right. grab me that. You know what See, saying? that's grab how D-Nice is, man. You know what I'm saying? D-Nice is like, yo, I'm going to fix it for you, but you, I'm going to show you how to fix it. Oh, so he forced every, you to learn. Yeah, like yeah. my stepdad, he let me walk away, and, I ain't, and I'm going to walk away. <laughs> D-Nice like, nah, come over here. You got to like, learn this gotta, show, you know I mean, yeah, and, and whatever I know about the cars because it's D-Nice. Well, that is, it's important to do. That's how I learned. And um, honestly, bro, like, I took, I, that's, like, when I, when, I, when I graduated and got my associate, when I was able to get the job at B-Braun mm-hmm. with, with the maintenance guys, like, I came in already. I wasn't, like, like, I had an idea of what I was doing, you know what I'm saying? Even though I, I did went to school, yeah, but that's all like theory of knowledge, right? But I I knew what these tools were, like to I, actually I get in the I field. Knew what a wrench was <laughs> right. The young boys coming out of college without like say real life experience. That's what really it can be really difficult uh, sometimes. School the school is just a groundwork, like it is. Like, theory is a lot of theory. School is great. Not knocking on school, but it's you. Having experience is great as well. Exactly. So having experience is great. Like 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 my stepdad Guido. That that nigga could fix anything. Word. It don't matter what it like is. That, man. He, my my stepdad built a computer from scratch. He built his own laptop or I it mean desktop that? at home. Yeah, desktop at home, see through. That's dope. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to build one right now. He did that, man. Oh, I'm yeah. talking about early two thousands. Like my stepdad didn't even graduate high school. He didn't even go to middle school. <laughs> he, he, well, he got that. He got that. That, that immigrant. That he got immigrant that real ethic. world life experience. <laughs> Hard work. <laughs> that immigrant work ethic is something, man. It's Don't different. Sleep on that, John. <laughs> it's because, like, like recently, I'm gonna share this story. Uh, how much time we got? Go ahead. This um, this, the last, this last story. Like recently, my stepdad's from Dominican Republic, and last year, my family came together. To fix his mother's house, my my stepdad mother's house, um, basically like the floor was rocks. I'm not talking about rocks. I'm talking was about like, this back in DR. Or yeah, like, but oh, like back in DR, deep back in DR. But I'm okay. talking about like rocks, like outside, like they walking on in a living room, like a yeah. real outside floor that's all fucked up. It wasn't finished. It wasn't a finished floor. It wasn't a floor. It was like an outside was floor outside in floor. the oh. in the house. Okay. All right, the ceiling was messed up. Like, every time it rained, my stepdad's mother got rained on and everybody in the house got wet. Yeah. Every time it rained. You know what I mean, my mom, my whole family came together and, like, fixed their house. Like, okay. now they got, like, a house. Like, like a regular house. You Word. feel me? That's what's up. That's what's up. Basically, I'm saying that's where my stepdad came from. So that's why when he came out here and he works mad hard because he thinks about them times when he was laying on the floor on the rocks. Word. Can you feel me? Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's a, yeah, man. It's, it, it, a lot of people look at us uh, immigrants. I'm an immigrant too, so a lot of people look at us and be like, "Damn, like, like, yeah, you drive is crazy." But yeah. they don't, they don't know what we went through or how we grew up. Exactly, it's a, it's a difference, <laughs> especially from a third world country. It is a big difference. Bro. It's a big difference. But uh, thanks for joining us. You know, hope you guys uh, learned a lot today from uh from Rugarel. yeah i'll be back <laughs> i'm coming back next sunday where we uh you know if you if you guys uh 
if you guys like some of the stuff Rel shared with man, you. Man, just tune in. I got a lot more to on, say, you know? man. <laughs> Rel's coming back. A lot to say. Drop some topics in the comments uh, if you want to specifically reach Rel or something you want him to speak on. Uh, we can always get that to him. But peace. And it, Rel, you got you wanna do you have anything you want to promote or, or or sponsor or shout out? Or do you want to give any like feature projects you think we're gonna be working on? You Not really right now. All I'm gonna say is just love, man. And just love. Love. That's man, it. That, peace. Bro, peace.